Good morning, y'all. I am running a little behind today. Um, May and Amy both had to have my attention this morning, and Chris. It's been kind of crazy, so I'm uh, putting on some socks right now. I hope y'all are having a good day. It's Tuesday. It is cloudy and rainy here, kind of gloomy outside. Um, so... It's uh, not a good day to get out, but I think I do have to get out. I'm looking for my shoes. I was going to put them on, but I guess I'll wait. Um, yesterday, y'all, I cleaned my house so good, except for the floors, of course. I swept those good. But I dusted everything and did a lot of organizing yesterday. So, um, I left about 3.30 yesterday looking for a refrigerator. I've about drove myself nuts trying to find a refrigerator that I'm happy with, and I'm having a really hard time. Um, you should have seen me in that store yesterday. It was just crazy. I wish somebody had been with me because it was so hard for me to make a decision. I made a decision on one that had dents all in it, and then I decided it had too many dents in it and made a different decision. Well, Yes, made a different decision. Then once I checked out, I realized it was a scratch and dent place. I realized, my glasses glare, don't they? I realized that uh, the doors didn't close on it correctly. So I said, can y'all repair these doors because they scrub? And they said, probably not. That might be one of the reasons why it's here. I said, okay, then now I've got to change my mind again. Lord, what a day. And I wound up picking out the same refrigerator that me and Chris looked at on Sunday in Home Depot. But it was uh, $250 cheaper in here, in the place I was in yesterday. So anyway, and now this morning I'm second-guessing myself again because it's a side-by-side. -side. And I guess I just need to let it go and quit worrying about it so I can start cooking again for Colorado Valley Cooks. Because I can't get my mind on anything except making the right decision, because when you buy a refrigerator, you have it for a long time. Anyway, I don't know what I'm going to do today. Uh, I'm burning up. It's hot. So I want to um, start our Bible study. And do you know I didn't even read about angels during all this craziness? I'm ready for our Bible study, but I'm not ready to talk about angels unless we just hit the highlights on it today. So let me get out my um, computer. I got me some tea. Anyway, I got up this morning. I'm just talking this morning. I'm waiting for a few people to come on. Uh, I got up this morning, and I'm going to recline. I like to recline while I do the Bible studies. Oh, I know what I can do. I can put the speaker in this so y'all can hear me better. Just one second. I forgot to do this yesterday when we were on. Let's see if I can find the hole. And I think you can hear better. Y'all will be able to see. Now it has a speaker in it. I don't know if that's any better or not. But um, I'm going to recline a little bit so I can get comfortable. <sighs> I've already had one of those mornings. You ever have those? Um. Anyway, Chris got up and he didn't have anything to take for lunch today because I didn't cook last night. And so I had to get up and fry chicken this morning. Not fried fried, battered and fried, but just sauteed in a pan for a sandwich for him for lunch. Well, then when Amy got up and saw that Daddy got chicken, she wanted chicken for breakfast. So I had to fry up her some chicken. Then when May got to school, she decided that she was going to continue to text and text me and talk about Wi-Fi hotspot. <laughs> Normally, I'm in here waiting on y'all to come on. And this morning, woo, it was, a, it was a quick time to get to 845. All right, let's talk about the Lord. How about it? Um, on our um, devotion this morning, it is one of my very favorite subjects, and that is salvation. I mean, who doesn't get excited about salvation? 
I hear a lot of people complain sometimes, oh, get tired of my preacher preaching on salvation. And I'm like, are you kidding me? That's what we're supposed to t talk about. Uh, if you want to be taught the Word of God, you need to go to church on Sunday night and Wednesday because on Sunday morning is their opportunity to spread the gospel. Um, and lots of times they do, okay? Um, so let's talk about what Spurgeon has to say about regeneration, he calls it. Um, March the 6th, 2018, morning reading by Charles Spurgeon. It says, ye must be born again, and he's taken it from John 3, 7. The chapter of John is one of the Gospels in the New Testament, talking about the good news of Jesus Christ. So let's open it up and hit some of the verses before we start talking about the meat, okay? Um, in the Bible, uh, the Word of God is considered uh, milk or meat. You know, when, you, when you're a new Christian, you're still uh, taking the bottle and just getting the milk. When you're a seasoned Christian and you've studied, then you're considered a Christian that can take the meat from the Bible. Okay? So I just thought I'd say that. All right. Now, chapter, uh, no, uh, we're in John chapter 3. And I'm going to start, because I like this. I like what it says. I like what it's about. So I'm going to read a little bit of the chapter to you. You've heard the story, if you're familiar with going to church and uh, the Gospels, okay? It says, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus and a ruler of the Jews, okay? And the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher, Come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. And then he says, Jesus answered to uh, Nicodemus, and, oh, uh, wait a minute, I skipped one of the most important things. Jesus said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, unto thee, actually, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So, we're on this subject of born again. Okay, let me say this. My friend, and sometimes she may be watching, and I love her to death, and she'll know who she is when I say this. But um, she's the one I told you all about that goes to church a lot. And uh, she's actually a sweeter person than I am. I mean, because I can be very opinionated and really... Uh, rough around the edges sometimes, especially when I'm not in the Word of God. Uh, and uh, But she does go to church a lot. And um, when I asked her about being born again, she really and truly, as much as she's been to church, and I'm telling y'all, she's been to church a lot, did not know how to tell me what it meant to be born again. And she was of the Baptist faith and had been going to a Baptist church, I mean, pretty much since she had children, I guess, pretty much. So for years, she's went to church and, and even went to Bible studies and even went to women's devotionals. And But she could not tell me how to be born again. Now, if you are on here and you are a Christian and you uh, think about it, and in your mind, you can't really tell me how to be born again, um, then that is something that you need to figure out and study, or I can help you with that, hopefully, today. Uh, but anyway, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Well, Nicodemus was like, okay. Nicodemus said unto him in chapter, in verse 4, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? That's what Nicodemus said. He was like really confused. And Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. 
Now let me tell you what he means by this, because a lot of people take this verse out of context. He says, except a man be born of water and of spirit. Now, some of you may think the water is baptizing, and it's not. Uh, because we're actually talking about being born. He's actually physically talking to Nicodemus, since Nicodemus asked the question, can you be put back in your mother's womb? Jesus is letting him know that that is a birth with water. Because what does a woman have in her womb? And what breaks before you have a baby? Your water breaks. So the first time that you are born is of flesh, of man, through the water of your mother's womb. That has absolutely nothing to do with baptism. Okay, we're talking about being born again. Um, so, then he says, you have to be born of the Spirit. So, we have a man being born from the, the, the woman, which is mankind, and we have being born of the Spirit. There's two different things, okay? So, now you got that. Let's say Jesus um, goes on and says, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That makes sense. Being born of the flesh was out of your mom's womb through the water. And that must, and then he says, um, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So we have a fleshly nature and we have a spirit nature. Okay? They're two completely different things. Um, so then he goes on and says, Marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. The wind blows where it lists, and thou heardest the sound of it. It says thereof, but cannot tell from whence it cometh, and whether it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. So he tells Nicodemus that it's something you can't see. It's something you're not going to know, that it's spiritual that the wind blows and you can feel it and but you can't see it okay so he lets nicodemus know about the wind as an example of how the spirit can work then nicodemus answered and said unto him how can these things be and jesus answered and said unto him art thou a master of israel and knowest not these things Verily, verily, I say unto thee, we speak that we do know and testify that we have seen and ye receive not our witness. If I tell you earthly things and you believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? So he's letting Nicodemus know that if a person, mankind, cannot believe earthly things, things and events that actually happen, then how in the world are they going to know how to believe in a spiritual thing? That's what he's saying. Now, our um, verse is actually taken out of John... Wait a minute. Y'all, I didn't even study commentary on this because this is one of my favorite subjects. So let me, let me look and see what our morning reading actually was. I think it should be highlighted when I get down here. Oh, it's seven. So uh, our actual reading was you must be born again. Okay. So let me just say this. This could go on for a while and I could give you scripture and all that. But I'm just going to say this. Uh, being born again is real. And it's miraculous. And Charles Spurgeon talks about that in his devotion today. Now that you know the difference between being born again and being born here by your mother's womb and in the flesh, um, then I'm going to continue to read a little bit in, in Charles Spurgeon's morning reading. And it says, um, da -da 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 -da. It says, Regeneration is a subject which lies at the very basis of salvation. 
And we should be very diligent to take heed that we are really born again. For there are many who fancy they are who are not. Be assured that the name of Christian is not the nature of a Christian. And that being born in a Christian land and being recognized as a profess of as professing the Christian religion is of no avail whatsoever. Now, this is where my friend, and I don't really know if she's ever been born again for sure or not, but she did get to thinking about it once I talked to her about it. But I think what she thought was because she went to church and she heard the word and she believed, you know, that it was true um, that, that, uh, that she was a Christian and she lived a Christian life. But just because you go and just because you believe that the word is true and just because you profess to be a Christian and you live a Christian life does not mean that you are born again. So if you do not know if you're born again, if you're unsure what it even means, then you may, you probably are not. If you cannot explain describe it to somebody and tell them how to be born again, then you may very well not be born again. And let me tell you, Jesus says plainly that you must be born again to enter into the kingdom of heaven. So it's a really, really big deal, okay? So, Ricky is saying to be born again is to convert to a personal faith in Jesus and follow Jesus, adhere to his teachings. I can't see what all she says. But let me just say this. It's not saying a prayer. It's not going to church. It's not reading your Bible. It's not being a, 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 a child of uh, a Christian. It's not being raised in a Christian home. It's not any of those things. Let me say this. The only way you can be born again is not just, uh, it's, it's simple but also yet complicated in the fact that it's not just believing either, okay? And the reason I say that is Satan believes, uh, he knows who Christ is, okay? So, when I say that you are born again, you should, uh, for one, none of us have enough faith to be born again without the Holy Spirit helping us through it, okay? So, God actually has to give you enough faith through the Holy Spirit to even make your mind even fathom what being born again is because it's a spiritual birth. It's not something that in your own mind, mentally, that you can understand. He doesn't ask us to understand salvation. He asks us to believe salvation, okay? So when he gives you um, the verses, one, one thing that a lot of people leave out is there's no reason to be born again unless you, um, you have to have a reason to want to be born again. Uh, not and one is going to heaven is a is a great thing, but you also have to understand that we're not worthy of God and we're not worthy of salvation and we're not worthy to go to heaven. And you have to understand that each and every one of us born in the flesh is of flesh and not of spirit. And you have to understand that we are sinners. We are born into sin. Now it gets, I mean, there's a lot of background I can give you on that, but you have to be, in your heart, you have to know that you're guilty, that you're guilty before God as a sinner, that you are not worthy to be born again and to live in the, he and live in the heaven without his help. You need a Savior to do that. The only way that we can be born again is to know that we actually need a savior. Um, you're gonna you're gonna need a savior to save you before you can believe that that uh, you are saved and born again. 
So, um, the Bible says in Romans that uh, there is none good, no, not one. So, you have to admit in your own mind and heart and soul that you are not good and that you are not worthy. Then you have to acknowledge that Jesus came here um, so that we could be saved and we could have a relationship with him and his father. Um, so you have to believe that he is real, that he was uh, came down here um, as a child, you know, as a baby and was born of a man. He died. He rose again. And you have to believe that he has the power to save you. Okay, once you can, once you identify the fact of who you really are and that you're a sinner and you do have some guilt and you see that you need a Savior, then you accept Jesus into your heart and you say, and you, it's not the praying that saves you. It's the fact that you um, truly believe. So what you have to do is you have to tell God, I am guilty. And I mean, he knows you're thinking it anyway because he's all powerful. So if you're thinking, oh, I am guilty and I am a sinner and I need a savior and, and you can admit that in your heart and you don't have enough, you know, too much pride and you can see who you are, um, then you can be saved. Um, so it's a, it's a real blessing. Um, then all you do is, is tell him. You confess with your mouth. Um, your sins, uh, you ask him to forgive you, and then you wholeheartedly, with all of your heart and soul, uh, know he's real and he's he can and has the power to save you. And then once you do that, actually he sends the Holy Spirit. He is your comforter, who actually comes into your body, who actually gives you enough faith to even believe to begin with and he resides in you. Can you believe that? That our God, our powerful all-knowing God the Trinity there's God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit so when God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit they all work together Okay. so once you admit that you need a Savior that Holy Spirit comes and lives and resides in your body. Some people think they have to call the Holy Spirit. You can kind of quench your Holy Spirit after they're living in you. Um, but, but your Holy Spirit is always with you. Um, well, the Holy Spirit is always with you, in you. He helps guide you. He helps guide you through the Word as you read. He helps you to understand uh, things. He helps you to see the guilt and he helps you to, to know right from wrong um, because now you have a spirit-filled body. You're not just flesh. You're spirit-filled. Okay? That's what being born again is. And once you are actually spirit-filled, then when you pick up the Word of God and you read about spiritual things, it's easier to understand spiritual things. If you've never been born again and you're not spirit-filled and you haven't been born of the water of your mother's womb and the spirit of the Holy Spirit, uh, then you have a much harder time understanding what the Bible says. And, and um, so that's really what born again means. So uh, it's not just as simple as going to church and, oh, believing in the Word of God and believing in Christianity and believing that you're a Christian, it's, uh, uh, you got to know that you're guilty. And without God, there is a real hell, and you would actually go there. You have to understand that we're not worthy of his honor and praise. We are fleshly beings here walking around on the face of the earth. You have to understand that our Father here on the earth, before we're spiritual, is the devil. We are born in a sin body. Okay? So those things matter too. 
And once you acknowledge the fact that you are of a of a um, of that sinful nature, then that's when you can see. Oh my gosh! Without God, I would go to hell. Without God, not only would I go to hell, but I deserve hell. Then you can actually feel your guilt, and you can see your sin, and you can confess it and get rid of it. Because once God saves you and he seals you until the day of redemption, you are white as snow in God's eyes. Let me tell you why you're white as snow. This is real important. You are white as snow in the Lord's eyes because when he looks down on you, if you have a spirit-filled body, if you have the Holy Spirit living in you, and I got chills right now because the Holy Spirit's living in me. Um, when you have that living in you and God looks down on you, you know what he sees? He doesn't even see your flesh anymore. He doesn't even see Tammy Nichols anymore. The bad Tammy Nichols that thinks all these terrible things and thinks bad about people or wants to talk about people or gossip about people or do things I shouldn't do or... I mean, because we still live in our flesh and we're going to have those thoughts. God doesn't see that. He sees the blood of Jesus Christ. All he sees is our spirit-filled bodies covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. So that's what he sees. And that's how we can communicate directly to God freely and openly and Jesus helps us do that okay so I hope that kind of gives you a better understanding of what being born again is so I'll read this because some of y'all come in late I'm going to read this uh, one scripture one more time and explain it because so many people get confused about what Jesus is talking about here and they do take it out of context um, and it says Nicodemus came to Jesus and he said um, Rabbi what know that thou art the teacher come from God for no man can do miracles that thou doest except God be with him so he calls God Jesus a man he tells them that he's a teacher you know just like he's any other teacher or a scholar and then Jesus says, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So he was letting Nicodemus know that Nicodemus needed to be born again of the Spirit before he would even know who Jesus really was. Because he tells him he cannot see the kingdom of God when Jesus was standing there, and Jesus is the kingdom of God, okay? And Jesus knew that Nicodemus couldn't see him because he wasn't born of the Spirit, okay? So Nicodemus asked him how, and Jesus said, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God, and then he said, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, which is of the water of the womb, and of the spirit is spirit, which is the spirit of God. Holy Spirit. Okay? Now, I'll give you this, too. Think about and ponder. My wash machine is spinning. I'm sure y'all heard it the whole time. I should not have been running it while I was trying to do Bible study. But that's just how it works. Um... Let me just say this too about this subject. This is an awesome subject. Is in the Old Testament, and then we'll go on down here in the bottom of this, when you're reading and he talks about Moses and he talks about heaven. In the Old Testament, Jesus had not come to the earth. The Holy Spirit was not given as our comforter until Jesus had been resurrected okay so Jesus had to die he actually descended down he actually ascended into heaven he, well he descended down to hell he went to heaven 
then he was resurrected. I mean, it's it's complicated, kind of. It's it's, but but he's God; he can do anything. But let me just say this: um, Jesus. Where was I going with this? Oh, Moses couldn't go to heaven because this Jesus had not um, been resurrected yet, and so you couldn't be born of the Spirit until uh, Jesus had been resurrected. That's the age that we live in. We live in the age where the Holy Spirit is here. We can be born again and we can enter to the kingdom of heaven. Um, and all these people in the Old Testament are not uh, like us. They cannot be saved the way that we can be saved and born again. That's why Jesus had to come here and die for us. Um, and he actually talks about that in the end of this chapter. So um, I'll give you that to ponder too. So um, let's see. Finally, it stopped. I'm looking. Maybe that was actually in our devotional from Charles. I remember reading it this morning. But anyway, keep that in mind. And if you're interested in where these people in the Old Testament went, um, that could be a different study, okay? Um, and I believe, actually, he goes and gets them. But uh, I don't want to get ahead of myself and say the wrong thing. Uh, because I do know what I'm talking about about salvation. <laughs> So anyway, I hope that y'all will know what born again means now, even if you've been in church all your life. Um, I hope that you will understand that you do need to know you're a sinner, and you do need to understand that you need a Savior before you could even be saved, because being born again is salvation. Um, I hope that you have uh, learned something today. I hope and pray that if for any reason you don't agree with something I said or you're confused about something I said or you want to know more about something I said, that you would please ask me in a personal message and I will be more than happy to make sure you understand it all, even if I have to get my husband to describe everything in detail because he, he's a lot better at, the, at it than I am because y'all know how my words come out my vocabulary does it's not the best in the world but um i hope that y'all have a wonderful wonderful day i hope that you are born again i hope you've been born of that water through your mother's womb and i hope you've been born again with that holy spirit that lives inside of you i hope and pray that you have and i hope and pray that if you have not that you will figure it out and that you will ask the lord to help you um know what that means and he will um we are going to say our prayer this morning, and uh, y'all pray that I can get my mind content on my refrigerator. I know that sounds goofy, but I want to do some cooking today um, for CVC, and um, I may come on and actually do a live video about CVC today, some of the things me and Chris have been talking about, but let's say our prayers this morning and thank God for our um, salvation in His Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, and uh, thank him for us being able to live here now where we can be born again, okay? Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so very, very much for the ladies that have decided to tune in this morning to learn more about you. I pray that you would um, bless them today as they go about their days. I pray that you would bless them um, if they need to be, um, if they're hurting from any kind of pain physically or uh, spiritually or um, through their families or hardships. I pray that you would be with all of us and help us be better Christians. I pray that you would help us read your word and learn more about you. Um, I just hope and pray that if there's anybody out there that don't really know for sure what born again means, they don't know what uh, it means to know that they're a real sinner and to know that they really do need a Savior. 
and that you can provide that for us through your son Jesus Christ I pray Lord that you would send your Holy Spirit down and that you would um, prick their hearts and minds that you would open up their minds so they could see spiritual things and not just fleshly things and their hearts so that they would see spiritual things and not just fleshly things so that they could actually recognize that you are the kingdom of God and that Jesus did come here so that they can um, do that and just be with us today and help those who are lost and undone and we just thank you so much for everything you do for us in Christ's name we pray amen y'all have a wonderful wonderful day um, it was my favorite 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 subject for what miracle is any better than being born again you know it's amazing that people will turn on their TVs and they'll watch these miracles that they think are miracles and what they don't realize is the largest miracle we have is being born again the largest miracle we have is being part of the Holy Spirit that it could actually live inside of us is just crazy to fathom and the only way we can fathom it is to know that we are spiritual beings not just fleshly beings it is just outstanding y'all absolutely outstanding it just makes you want to shout don't it so anyway the best thing that we could ever 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 be is born again and believing in the word of God and having that spirit living inside of us so that we could be a a little bit like Jesus Christ. Y'all have a wonderful day, and we will see you tomorrow, 845 sharp. Love you. Bye.